today on an all-new Maryland Dentist Show. Simple holiday solutions to get you through the season. Christine Cushing's secrets on preparing Christmas dinner days in advance. Then, need to make a grocery store bouquet look lovely? Forgot to pop your wine in the fridge? Sebastian Sentner shares his simple event planning tricks. Hey. As promised, we're going to make your uh, holidays really, really special and easy. So, speaking of easy, I'm just kidding. Sebastian Zender is here with us today. Hey, Hello. Hey, Judy. Nice to see you. You know, we've got to get some new phones to more people. I know. Well, you know, it's a reason to open champagne at least. Well, exactly. Okay, so uh, good so for you. So, we're going to give you a few little tips and tricks to make the holidays a little bit easier. So, you know how stressful everybody gets around yeah, this time yeah, of year yeah. and yeah. so on. And some hosts, hosts are really, they're just so cool because I think it's the planning. Mm -hmm. We've got it down pat, right? Uh, it just, you know, it goes to the territory. I guess you got to so. do this 900 times a year, so I you can know. get it right a few times. So what would you like us to know? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is about chilling wine. So a lot of people know to use an ice bath, right? Yes. That's a little easier, so you add some water to the ice. But what a lot of people don't realize is that actually if you add salt to the water as well, yeah. what happens is it actually makes the ice um, melt at a much cooler temperature. So what will happen is that your ice, uh, your beverages, sorry, will get about 30% uh, cooler, or they'll get cooler 30% faster. Oh, okay. So it speeds, it speeds up your cooling time by about 30%, makes it a lot easier, so you don't have to chill things so early. Do you need a lot of salt for that? Or just no, you do, but like for a bucket this size, I'll probably put two ounces in. For a regular champagne bucket, about three quarters of an ounce. But you can't over-salt it. It's not like you're going to drink the water afterwards. Right, that's right. Yeah. Although there's that one cousin. Well, that we you never know. Because we ran out of ice. I had a little bit of vodka just as strong. You should be good. Okay. So, so, um, that's now, the I thought just sticking the, uh, the, the bottle in the freezer is a good idea. You, you don't like that. Well, I mean, number one, it, it's, it's not the best idea, and if you forget about it, it's a really bad idea. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a really <laughs> it's, a, it's all it's happened to all of us. I know it happens. Then you got sure. your, you know, champagne on the chicken nuggets and stuff like that. Yeah. It doesn't work so It's up. not so great. No. Okay, give us something else. Okay, so opening a bottle of champagne. What's interesting is that yeah. as much as we all open lots of champagne over the holidays, most yeah. people don't realize how to open it properly. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to, first of all, so you okay. take the, the foil now off. Now watch this, because okay. you're going to show everybody yeah, no how to swords, do No swords, no yeah. swords, no thumbs underneath. Okay. Center, okay. don't aim it at your host. Okay. That's another way to definitely get not invited back. Okay, so you get rid of that. Okay. We're going to get rid of that. The next thing what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our thumb, our hand around it, yeah. like this, and around the bottle. We're going to turn in opposite directions. But if you notice, I'm putting my thumb on top. Right. So what happens is I can actually feel the cork coming out, and then very slowly, like that. So what happens is... It's not easy. Why did it make such a big deal? Well, that's, you know what? It's not such a big deal. I mean, if you have a sword and yeah. chop it off, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you don't waste any. No, you, you don't, don't waste any. You don't want to waste any, right? Yeah. And same thing when it comes to pouring. So what I'm going to show you here is that when you pour the champagne, a lot of people pour it, and then what I'm going to do is stop right away. I'm going to let the fizz go down, and I'm going to continue to slowly pour. Because, again, that way it won't overflow, and you slowly let it go down like that. Okay. And then you're good to go. There you and are. And uh, here's an interesting tip, which most people don't know mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. is never wash your champagne glasses in the dishwasher. Well, that I knew, because, but I don't know why. Now, why do you say that? Because uh, it gets them too clean. You actually don't want your champagne glasses like dishwasher clean. You want them to be washed them by with you know with soap uh, by hand and dry them. If they're too clean, the bubbles don't bounce off the glass the right way, and you lose the bubbles faster. Did you know that? That is so amazing. So in other words, don't make a big deal of undoing the champagne, okay? And wash by hand. Yeah. The glasses. You know, I mean, nobody really wants to no, wash by hand. No, but, but you know, the other reason why I, I was told, because not all the glasses fit properly, and they can get shipped and everything. That's that, what I thought. That's another reason why yeah. it's champagne glasses, but wine glasses are the same thing. But specifically, the reason why is because the bubbles won't bounce properly. I learned so much in such a little time. Okay, here we go. All right, so on to napkin folds. So yes. we two very, very simple napkin folds if you're doing a plated dinner. So first mm -hmm. off, starting with a standard napkin, 14 by 14, 12 by 12, and I'm just going to do triangles. So I'm going to fold one triangle, another triangle, there we go, and now once I have it at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just curl it in. If you notice, as it curls in like this, mm -hmm. what you end up having is you have a little napkin like that. Mm -hmm. But what you can do, you can add a little garnish to it, or a little accent, like this. Nice. Napkin ring. Yeah. Or you just flip it around, put it into the glass. Oops. And? There we go, I'm making a mess. That's what happens when I do it after champagne. And, and there you go. go. See how nice it looks at very, the very table setting? Yeah. Yeah. I and like then, a lot. I'll show you one more okay. very quickly. So this is, if you're doing a plated dinner and you're actually doing menus. Okay, this is an interesting. You can print out menus now on your home computer. Oh, I know. My friend does that all the time. You know, it's kind of formal. It's and so that's nice. a little bit of elegance to the evening. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it like this. I'm going to fold it over again. Now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold this in. Like that. And that's all. And again, on this side, it's like you're making a bed. Yeah. Right. There we go. 
and pop it like that. I put the menu in. Menu goes in. Okay, that's And you're good to go. Look. Pass out. So two of these and that control. So. Now what do we have here? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you actually how to present canapes in a bit more interesting way. Most people do canapes. It's very basic. It's on a toast. It's on a flat tray. So we're going to show you something a little bit more interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to show you two different canapé ideas. So the first one, take a little rice cracker, putting that on the tray. These are goat cheese balls. So what we've done is we've taken goat cheese, cut it into cubes, and then just roll it to finish it off. Huh. Okay? Yeah. So it's nice and accented like that. I thought you, you used your melon baller, but no, you didn't. No, that, that's kind of tough to do. Yeah. But if you can do it, wow, then you got to show me how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some seafood what was that? sauce. What was that? That's a little bit of seafood mm -hmm. sauce, a little bit of crumbing. Now don't worry if it spills. That doesn't really matter. You can clean that up afterwards. And I'm going to finish off with this. So and that's crab meat? That's crab meat. That's crab meat, ah. a little bit of seafood sauce, a little bit of chive. So just garnish like this. Uh -huh. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to skewer it with an acrylic skewer. So just like that. So I'll get rid of all that. That's all done. Out of the way. Really, really simple. And the other thing is about canapes, try and keep them very geometric, so one line or in triangles or squares, and also only do one type of canapé per tray. Don't yes. mix them up. Why is that? Well, a few reasons. Number one, it's simpler. When you're actually plating them up, you're not going through like four different things. Mm -hmm. But also it allows you to describe the canopy much faster. So this is a crab meat and spicy aioli on uh, a little rice cracker with goat cheese versus trying to do that over four canopies. What's an aioli again? Aioli is actually a mayonnaise base. So there's a little bit of mayonnaise in this, right? And then seafood sauce. So it's a mixture. Aioli is anything that is mayonnaise based. Okay, did not know that. Mm -hmm. All right. Next. And then we're going to show you something else. Now, the thing which people realize is that um, a lot of canopies are savory. You can also do sweet canopies. So what I'm doing is I'm taking traditional New York cheesecake. Right, now what I've done, put it in the fridge. You can also put it in the freezer for a little bit instead of your bottle of wine. And I'm going to make a little cube like this. So you buy that at the store already just, made? Yeah, no, standard, well, absolutely. I you like make, this if, idea. You want, if you want to make it, you can make it. What I'm going to do is I took an eggplant here, okay, mm -hmm. two halves of an eggplant, mm -hmm. cut it in half, put it down like that. Okay, you can do it on a tray, obviously, not just right on the counter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to skewer this. I'm going to put it into a little bit of graham cracker. <gasps> Okay, now this I can either dip, just like that, there we go, oops, okay. let me get it on there, perfect, and then, right in there. So again, it's about how you can present it in a more interesting way, so you're not just sending everything out looking exactly the same. That's right, that's right, I like that, I like the fact that it's pre-made. Oh, now, it's very simple, and these are all, if you notice, two or three steps. Really, and one chunk is for me, and one chunk is for that, and I one can chunk actually, is for me. I can oh, do the whole thing, I can just put really? one big piece on a stick and... <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, okay. And once again, so when you're doing all of this, this should be. I want to go back to this for just yes, a second. That has to be uh, cold when you do that. Well, or yeah. Goat cheese. The, yeah. the more the, the more room temperature it gets, the stickier it gets. So anything you're working with in this sort of way, or even the cheesecake, the colder the better. So fast. Right? Learned so much. Thank you, Sebastian. So good. Okay. You can find these canapé recipes on Maryland.ca. We have to take a break, but Sebastian's going to come back right after this. Great ideas. Great, 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 great ideas. Thank you. We'll be right back. Sebastian Center shows us simple, festive flower arrangements. Hey, we're back with Sebastian Center who has some simple and elegant holiday floral ideas for us. And I want you to show us what you're going to do first, but I have to tell you, I so admire people putting these great bouquets together. What I've noticed is they're quite simple. You know what? They are really simple. It's that you, you know, you look at something, you don't realize what goes into it, so it looks really complicated, yeah. but they're really, really simple. So you're going to show us how you do it We're going to show you four totally different looks. We're going to start with really, really clean, really simple. So what mm -hmm. we've done is we've used some outdoor elements. Obviously, the tulips aren't in season, but we got brought those in for a little bit of an exotic feel to it. Mm -hmm. And then what we've done is with the regular, the foliage from outside, as well as the tea lights, try to incorporate a little bit of the outdoors inside. Now, normally this time of year we should have snow. Yes. Which we don't have. So well, we don't have it here, but some other places uh, do across the country. Absolutely. But so to make our own snow, does it come have... down to that? It comes down to this. What we're going to make this? snow. It's called Snow Real. It's a really, really neat product which we like to use. Now, the, one, the nice thing about it is that unlike snow, it doesn't melt. So what we can do is for centerpieces and things like that, you can get it at any floral shop, et cetera, et cetera. You just mix it up like this. Add a little bit more water to that, maybe. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a snow that actually you can put into centerpieces, onto tables, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you can incorporate into all of your holiday decor. So just do that like that. And there we go. Make snowballs out of it. Throw I it bet. in. Oh, yeah. This so is go. great. So we're going right? to do something like that. And then we're just going to... Ah. Okay. So we end up having, we have a little bit of a snow drift like this. And it's funny, anytime I've used this and somebody hasn't seen it before, what do they say to you? They're like, everybody goes to touch it. They kind of go like this. They can't resist. No, they can't. So it's great. And you know, it'll last for days, et cetera. And then you just uh, throw it out and it's actually, uh, 
it'll dissolve. I love it. I love it. And I love the fact that you really packed these tulips in. Yeah, very really, simple. Yeah. And you see, we used a leaf around yeah, the inside. Yeah, what leaf so, do you use for that? Well, in that case, we actually used, I believe it's a banana leaf we used on this one, but you can use any type of large leaf. And what you can do is you can cut it, and what happens is, is that that way it doesn't show what's going on inside. Yeah. So however you're holding the flowers, instead of showing it, you can hide it. Beautiful. Yeah. And then you add the water last. Absolutely. Okay. We add a little bit of water and then we finish it off. But this is a perfect centerpiece to explain this. This is so pretty. So we actually did something similar over the Thanksgiving holidays. We thought it would be kind of neat because we have such a great response to do a full bouquet or a full arrangement this way. Mm -hmm. So what we do is this, is we take either cylinder vases, square vases, any type of tall vase. You put your flowers in them, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put enough water so that the stem is about an inch to an inch and a half into the water. Mm -hmm. Then you don't fill the rest of the water until just before your guests arrive so that the water doesn't get murky and the flowers don't get too wilted. Okay, so right before they arrive, you pour that water. Right before they arrive, we're going to pour a little bit of water in like that so you see it fills so it all up. So a little bit, so the stem has a little bit of water. Exactly. Like the day of? Day of, you can do it, you know, the morning of, etc. It'll last about two days before the water starts to look a little bit grimy. And so we just go like Isn't that. Isn't that great? And then what we do is, I love it. we're also going to finish ah. it with a nice little floating candle. Floating oh, candle. Be careful here, so I don't put the candle on. There we go. Yeah. Center. Very pretty. There you go. So again, it's a totally different look, a little bit more traditional, a little bit more sort of uh, uh, um, high end. Yeah. It's very high. It works well. It'll work really well on a long dining table because then you can create something a little bit more. Let's talk about something with the first two. Numbers, yes. numbers. numbers. You have like in this, the first table, the, the big your bouquet and then the little bouquets. Yes. This one you have five. Yeah, you know six. what, actually we have six on this. A okay. lot of people think you use uneven numbers, it works mm -hmm. better. It depends really on the table and the setting you're using it in, that sometimes works, and sometimes you can use even. So in this case, for example, I've got four, so it's a round table, you can evenly space it. Here, six happens to work because it's long. If I was and only doing, heights, yes, but if I was only doing uh, a round table with this, you'd notice that I'd only do three, just uh, like that. Okay. That's and that would look enough. better. Okay, good. So moving along, this was kind of fun. We wanted to, again, show different contrasting looks. So there's a look for everybody, no matter what your holiday decor happens to be. What we did here was we took a traditional vase, and this is actually a glass vase. You can hear it. And we wrapped it like a holiday gift. Nice. And again, you can match it to whatever holiday decor you have around the house, yeah. or your tree, or anything like that. Then we did a bouquet that was very seasonal, put it in another glass vase. And all we're going to do is we're going to pop it right in there. Again, it's overstuffed. And there Stop you go. Stop it. Absolutely, what especially when you're using this kind of stuff, because you know a lot of this comes from outside, etc. Right, okay, so let's talk about what this is. This is uh, from out this evergreen, is evergreen and right. this is what? This is actually, well, this is a floral, so this is something that is not seasonal, mm -hmm. but I like to mix in a little bit of both of them. Yeah. So that it shows a little bit of a contrast. I like to pop a white in there, and then some berries, and there you go. And you know, you can do it without this, so you can do it without the floral and just do the seasonal, it works fine, but this is just add a little bit more of an upscale look. And a little bit of candles around that, Perfect. and this is pretty. Now, this is quite pretty. Okay, so this is different. This is a little bit more upscale a little bit darker, a little bit more refined. Um, but what we're using here is we're using silk flowers. So these are magnolia leaves and magnolia flowers that aren't real. And the idea behind it is, is that, well, first of all, this is very, uh, magnolias are really expensive, mm -hmm. and even the branches, and, uh, you know, they dry out, etc. So if you buy something like this, you can use it in different types of applications over the course of the year. So we've combined, between the brown and the green and everything, more sort of a pewter coppery look with it. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit more upscale, so this is actually from, uh, from my house. Oh. Did you, did you tell your wife you're taking? doesn't know I took it, so. <laughs> so I talk to you about this. So, so how, you know, you, I love these round uh, tablecloths. These were really, Not no, tablecloths, they're placemats, right? Yeah, the placemats. You know what? Again, I'm all about reusing. So you things are. That, things you might have around your house, how can you use them in different ways? You have glass vases. You have yes. you know, different types of pieces. Yeah. So we're using placemats here as underlays. We have the mirrored tray. Yeah. So, for example, that's great for canapes, but also change it up a little bit, put a reef instead of being on the door goes down and it's, it's really more of a centerpiece. And you know what you can do is you can pop something like this right, right into in it, right in the middle of it, and you're good to go. Okay, the other thing too is I just look, like because they're they're full of flowers, how you put all these different balls and stuff in it. Yeah, what we did is nice. it was to hide the stems. Yeah. I mean it adds to the decor as well, but at least this way you don't actually see the stems. And it looks, and again, you can take them out afterwards and use them as totally different Okay, uh, so let's do one more lesson again. If you're sure. doing a round table, your thought is basically, do, do I numbers? You know what it comes down to is you have to look at how much space you're filling. So mm -hmm. if it's the center of a table, mm -hmm. right, then you have two options. Either you're going to do something, oops, let's move that something back Something burning? Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. It's, it's to give that seasonal sense. <laughs> we're burning, we're burning some fresh pine. Um, so if you're going to do the center of a table and it's yeah. a round centerpiece, a single one works great, and you can do four around it. But if you're going to do just three pieces in the center, mm -hmm. four will look odd. So you want to use three in that case. Gotcha. But what you really need to do is take a step back, take a look at it, and think to yourself, how does that look? 
Does that work or not? Is there some space that needs to be filled, or does it look overfilled? Right, right. And also, you just jam. You like the containers are full of flowers. Yes, absolutely. Full of greenery. Well, you know what? Cause this kind of stuff is so inexpensive. You yeah. can get it from the backyard. You can cut a couple of branches down, or cut a couple of branches. Or we don't want everybody trims their tree. The bottom. You always take off the few uh, branches at the bottom. Use it. Reuse them in this kind of a way, and it works really well. Sebastian, always great ideas. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh, Happy I love holidays. that. Happy holidays to you. Stick around. We've got lots more simple, entertaining ideas coming right up. Love it.